What's going on everybody and welcome to another data visualization with Python and Dash tutorial. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is kind of um, bringing everything up to at least the point where I'm at right now with the app. Uh, there's a lot of little things that have been thrown in here and changed and added and all that uh, and, and I'll just kind of go over them pretty quickly. There's really no super new concepts here except for maybe the way that, the, that we're doing the database which I may get into the, but that's a totally separate tutorial. Um, it's it's mostly just for text search specifically with SQLite and getting that to be very fast. Um, so I probably won't do that necessarily for this one, but I'll at least tell you <laughs> what we what we've done. So, anyways, this is the app. Um, live Twitter sentiment. You type in a search, um, and let's say you wanted to search for car. You wait a minute. <laughs> Or two there we go there's car now part of the reason why we wait a while so for example there's car but if I'd highlight car and just delete car really quickly um, it's much much faster and the problem with with the search as it is right now is if we type car each letter gets searched in the database so if I typed it slower you would see oh it searches for C and then C A and then R it's just if I type it quickly enough uh, it's not going to you're just not going to see it all update you're just going to see the full term um, but anyways, so that's one thing I'd, I'd like to improve. Otherwise, uh, what we have is just live updated sentiment over here. Just basically it's every second, I think. Uh, and then over here, this is just longer term sentiment. It's updated. We can look at that later, but, um, I think maybe 60 seconds. Uh, here are the tweets. These are updated instantly. So as they come in, it gets updated here. Uh, and then also I, I show basically the date, the tweet, and then the sentiment. And I also color code the sentiment with a slight kind of background um, tint, either green or red. And then we also track positive and negative sentiment. Uh, take notes. A lot of sentiment is neutral. Uh, I thought about showing both and then I realized I, I, you can click on these and like make it appear or disappear. It's kind of annoying though because each time the graph loads it, it goes back to wherever the original state was and I felt like this was a little more useful than also showing the neutral but um, all the code is open sourced uh, which I have the uh, the repo right here. It's just syntax slash social sentiment so github.com slash syntax slash social sentiment. I will put a link in the description though um, so if you need it uh, you can head there rather than typing that in because that would be so horrible. Um, everything is pretty much explained here. Um, so I guess uh, I don't really think there's anything else I really want to go over. Oh, well, I guess we have like related terms and stuff like that. But that's also so like depending on what you search into here, like if we search car, we can see the related terms to car. And that's just any basically it's any nouns that are contained in tweets with car. And then we count and then the top ones get shown um, so for especially for a lot of things like for example with car career gets chosen well car is a it's a sub word inside of career and so that's probably what's going on same thing with car uh, whereas if we do maybe nothing we get maybe a little more useful uh, information and then if we were to search maybe maybe Trump hopefully we'd get some more related terms to Trump than just the fact that because Trump's probably not a subword to so many things. So Sessions, obviously, uh, Donald Trump, President. Um, not sure what, what Connor would be in reference to. Rex Tillerson just stepped down. Russia, because, of course, the GOP. Um, not sure about New and Wood. And I'm not sure Kud Kudlow, Kudlow. Uh, anyway, and then obviously just recent trending. Um, messy, that's just real, really recent. I actually just truncated the database. Um, Stephen Hawking unfortunately passed today, so that's trending. Um, and yeah, the other thing. So let's run through the code at this point. So what we have here is this, the, the contents in here, basically the main application is this dash mess. Uh, if you wanted to run it locally, you can use the dev server, um, just so you could run it on, you know, on local host port 8050. Uh, the Twitter stream, this is what you're going to use to actually stream tweets from Twitter. You've got the config, uh, which right now is just stop words. So it has to do with these uh, these related terms for the most part. So there's a lot of words that we, you know, they're just totally use useless. So we, we actually want to just ignore them if they did happen to come up. 
So um, that's all that's in the config, but we'll look at it in a moment. And you got cache. Uh, this is just for ca caching, especially in on the web app itself, um, just to hopefully get things to run quicker if, so we're not just performing the same searches and stuff. Uh, and then the db truncate.py. Um, this is just so how we can just truncate an infinitely growing database. So um, I just cleared it. I actually made a mistake when I was building the truncate script and I was either going to have to leave probably 10 million records uh, that I'd never be able to delete or just start over fresh. I chose to start over fresh, but hopefully now the, the, the truncate script works. Uh, so anyway, we lost, I think we had like 35 million records or something and I just, I didn't want to leave a bunch of records I could never get rid of. So I just started over. Uh, but it should be about 3.5 million records a day. If you're faster processing, you should be able to get more than four. Uh, and if you're slower at processing, you might get less. But that's a lot of records every day, and that database grows very quick. It's just a simple SQLite database. Um, but uh, we're actually using FTS with the SQLite, which is great for text search, uh, but more on that in a moment. So uh, I think probably the first thing we'll open up here is just dash mess.py to kind of run through the code here. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything super major. So a lot of stuff here, it's just really pretty, pretty badly organized. So, so you, if anybody wants to contribute, that's probably one really easy way to do it is just to pep eight this code. It's just uh, all over the place. Um, but as you can see, we've got, uh, you know, basically the layout of the, the application I'm using the row, you know, row divs basically from, uh, materialize CSS. So that's kind of how we're, we're maintaining the, um, the interactability, I guess, of uh, the oops, of the application. So, like for example, if I squish this up, everything's kind of interactive, and eventually it'll pop down, and then we just have one graph and one thing per, and the table's actually interactive as well. Um, so, using materialized CSS, we're able to to, to actually have that uh, interactive interactability, I guess. Um, and then I'm also importing Google Analytics. Um, yeah. So other than that, um, let's see, let's go back up. Okay, so that's basically how the layout's happening. I don't really think that should be too, too complex. It's just by giving it uh, proper class names, especially on like the row and then each element um, class name, this is just how big that class is and stuff like that. So if you wanna learn more about that, just go to materialize CSS. Um, trying to think if there's anything like so probably you know the line graphs you should have already seen and I'm pretty confident I can't remember it's been a while since I filled that filmed the last tutorial uh, I think we covered the sentiment cert or um, the volume part two uh, the only graph that probably we haven't covered is a pie chart but again all these things are just plotly graphs uh, so with the pie I honestly can't remember if it's a donut in um, no, nope, it's a pie. Yeah, it's called pie. Um, but again, uh, to figure out for me the way that I did that, I just went to um, to the Plotly documentation, looked for a pie chart, what was required, how to how to make it, and like that's it. Um, and then, as usual, the return is just the data and the layout. Um, so any graph you can find in the documentation, I mean, that's all you really have to do. Um, and then, you know, everything's pretty much the same. Unfortunately, one thing I really wish you could do is like have multiple outputs per callback. Like if you could out, I mean, I don't even know how you would do it to be honest. Um, but that would be nice if you could do that. So you can definitely have one input, go to multiple callbacks and then output things. Um, but especially like one thing that we were having trouble with was the, uh, doing some various calculations. So you, for example, we're using this caching system um, so that we only pull, uh, like for example, is this, I'm trying to look for one that updates our cache. Uh, it's at least one of the SQL queries that's like the 10,000 pull, for example. Hmm, it's not gonna be that one. I could just do a search, I suppose, for cache. Uh, cache.get, I don't want to do that. Here's a cache.set here at least. Yeah, so like, for example, in the historical graph, we, we need to at some point have made this, this query, right? But while we, since we've made this query, we could also perform an operation, but then we need to be able to save those terms and then share them across and stuff like that. So anyways, we're using the cache for that. 
Uh, the other thing while we're here, while I'm looking at a query, uh, just note that these the select statements are a little different, right? We, we're, we're using the uh, FTS from SQLite, and at least to my knowledge, the main purpose of F FTS would only be for text search. Um, so, so you, you're probably not going to get any gains with it using for other means. But if you're looking, like if you're doing what, like what we were doing, where you're you're looking for a word inside of one of the columns, and you're using that whole like like thing, um, then you will probably be able to see significant gains, like huge gains, by using um, FTS fast text search actually i'm not even sure if that's what it stands for but that's probably what it stands for anyway sorry if that's not what it stands for uh anyway um so that that is a, is a little different but as long as you keep the database kind of small like you it probably won't get too too absurd but even after like the end of a of a full day uh these queries can can take a considerable amount of time so uh that the fts stuff helps a ton uh and thanks to daniel kukiello who's who's the one that basically wrote all that stuff um I'm trying to think if there's really anything else i mean the rest of this stuff is pretty simple logic and stuff that you've really already seen uh, everything boils down to these callbacks you take some input you spit it out to output and all that one thing like uh, I would really like to be able to do is um, in these, like the recent trending and the related sentiment. So these words right here, I'd really like to make them clickable. And the issue I had was obviously to make them clickable, you would just give them some sort of ID and then have like an on click event. The problem I came across is when they are displayed on the page, um, that causes an event um, which caused them to run and then it just starts this you know never ending loop of one gets called it pops up does a search gets some related terms as soon as the first one gets you know thrown in boom that one runs and it just goes on forever so not really sure how to how to best uh, do these but yeah it'd be really nice if I could just boom click hawking and then bang it just searches for hawking um, so anyways, that's, that's probably the biggest thing I'd like to fix other than just the way this, this looks. <laughs> I wish it was a, a little better looking, but I'm not good at styling. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think if there's really anything else that is crazy with this code. I mostly just wanted to, to put the code out, describe a few things to you guys and explain a few things. And then, um, and really that's it. So, uh, I, I don't think, the, oh, the other thing for... <laughs> I still was making that mistake here where, where we were just uh, defining external JS, but then I was iterating over external CSS, which was kind of weird. So that's been going on for a while. I never fixed that. So make sure you don't, you're not making that mistake still. Um, other than that, let me scroll down here and see. Okay, so Twitter stream. So yeah, if you want to uh, clone this, all you really need to do is obviously make sure you install the requirements, uh, fill in your information to the twitterstream.py, go to apps.twitter if you need to. Um, if you wanna deploy it, use this, otherwise just run the dev server instead. And then this should be probably run from time to time. Uh, I think that's really it. I, I don't really know that I need to cover anything else, but if you have like questions or whatever on the application itself, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. Uh, you can also join our Discord. I'll have a link in the description for the Discord. If you want, you can also file an issue. Like someone said social sentiment wasn't working, but I guess he hasn't responded yet. Um, but I wasn't able to replicate that issue. It's, I've never seen that error when I tried to load this, so I'm not really sure. Um, otherwise, I think that's it. If you have ideas on how to do the clicks, that'd be great. If you have ideas on how to make this look better, even if you just want to change the colors, uh, go for it. Most of the colors, like I said, are, oops, who's that? Who's that good looking individual? Oh my goodness. Uh, let's go to dash mess. So the main colors are right here in app colors. And then these are sentiment colors for, uh, the related sentiment i believe and then really really well placed um <laughs> down here i think this is for the hmm i can't remember if this is for the pie chart or if this is for i can't remember sorry but the pie charts colors are at least in here uh i don't think of any other colors 
Um, I wanted those to be a little brighter though than you know the colors up here, and then I also wanted the table colors to not be absurdly you know brightly colored or not. So, anyways, um, there's the co some colors are in a few other locations, but I mostly think it's like these main colors here, like the black background and the color for these lines and stuff like that. That would probably help, and just the way like these you know titles and stuff like that. So it's just it's just not very well designed. So so probably those main colors and maybe some more of this layout stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Questions, comments, leave them below. Ask us in the Discord. Post an issue. Make a pull request. Otherwise, I'll see you in another tutorial.